image hover effects are a really fun part of a web page. Not only is it fun and dynamic, but it encourages a bit of discovery and interaction from your user. So as you see here, I can float over different elements on the page and they, they respond to me and it makes me want to discover more. Obviously, if you're using this to indicate something that's clickable, that's a really good user experience as well. So we are going to look at how to create this in Elementor. So we're going to apply image hover effects to different images and elements. And, and uh, by the end of this video, you'll feel confident in how to do that. Now, while we're here, I will show you how to position these images and elements a bit more dynamically. And we'll also look at how to create something like a circle on an image without using masks, which come with some drawbacks. And I'll cover that in the video. I'll just say now that if you want to find the next video, which will most likely be linked at the end of this one, we will look at some more image hover effects, uh, focusing on the backgrounds. Background image hover effects are usually something you would find in a grid plugin, uh, something like in Essential Add-ons for Elementor or something where you'd find a few snazzy background image hover effects. But this is achieved in Elementor Pro with no coding, and no further plugins. Uh, another example of how you can use this is here. And you can see that we have that background image hover, both on the color and also on the grow and rotate in this example. And it's a background image. We've we've got the the you know work department on the on the top there. Uh, if you've seen my custom post type video on team profiles or any of the others, uh, you know that I'm playing with a lot with custom post types and loop templates. And this is applied to team profile custom post types. So this is a loop grid. And again, we've got these snazzy background image hover effects and actually it's showing the name. And this is all using Elementor Pro, no coding or a bit of CSS for the name there. Uh, but for the background image hover effects, there's no coding and no further plugins. And so here we've got that again applied to a loop carousel. And of course, if you wanted to show uh, the fields of industry, you could use it in that sort of sense as well. Uh, but this is what I'll cover in the next video, uh, background image hover effects. But in this one, let's get on to creating something like this. Okay, so first thing we need to do is go to our edit page and I have a uh, section here already. So maybe I'll just refresh that. And I would like, uh, two side by side and we'll increase the height a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is grab ourselves an image. And so I'll swing that on in there. And we want to choose something uh, that's a bit more sort of uh, uh, generic, like the background, we will use the same as in the example. I'm going to give this a fixed height. So I'm gonna fix this as pixels with 500 and 500. Okay, so you can see that the image is a bit squashed up there. That's because we've given it a fixed width and height, and that's creating an issue, obviously, with how it displays. So pop along to Object Fit and go to Cover, much like you would with a with a, a background image. I'm just going to zoom out there a bit so I can see more of the uh, more of the page in the editor. Now, before I show you the actual image hover effect, uh, we will change the 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 shape of this. Now, a lot of people at this point would pop along to mask. And uh, obviously we understand if you apply a mask such as circle, we achieve that, that circular shape. And that's great. We could, we could do a flower, um, a sketch. That's a pretty uh, funky one. Uh, but let's stick with the circle. What are the drawbacks of masks? Well, if we want to do something like this box shadow, which I have here, uh, it doesn't work uh, on a on a masked image. So if I pop along here, I'm on the image style tab. And you can see that I'm applying a box shadow there and nothing is happening. OK, so we could get around that and go to the advanced tab and pop along to a border and put the box shadow on. But you'll see it applies to the square of the image. So it's applying to the, the actual shape of the image and not the mask. So that doesn't help us. So let's uh, let's reverse all of that. We don't wish to have this border box shadow on anymore. And neither do we want the mask. So remove that. OK, so what do we do? We click back on the image, pop along to the style tab. And this works because we've got this set to a square, a, square, a, set, a set square, <laughs> uh, border radius take that to percentage and then put all of the values to 50. So 50% on each one. And that gives us a circular 
have. How wonderful. And you can already see, actually, the box shadow that I applied earlier is there. And it's it's going around the curve of the circle. So you can really do a lot with that um, and lots of fun. Okay, uh, just to let you know, you can unlink this and have loads of fun. Um, you can see you could all make a speech bubble. So if we put that back to 50, uh, you can do something like that. It looks a bit like a, a speech bubble there. Um, so yeah, uh, have a play with that, but that's how to achieve the circle. And we can have a box shadow there as well. Uh, it also applies to the border. So this again wouldn't work with the mask, but we can apply a, a circular border. And let's uh, chuck on a color there. Look at that, how wonderful is it? And of course we can play with the, the, the double and the dotted. I have lots of fun with borders. How fun are borders? Very fun. So that's all well and good. Uh, we've got a funky shape, we've got a, a border and a, a box shadow. How do we apply the image hover effect? Hop along to the image style tab and pop along to hover and you will see hover animation. And we've got loads of presets here. So just simply select one and hover over and see what you like. Uh, some of these are a little bit grotesque to be honest and just look a bit cheap. Uh, but again, I, I really like the simple ones, float and rotate, I think are my favorite. And so we've applied that there. So if we save that, this will occur whenever somebody hovers over that image. Okay, last thing that we want to do really on this video is place some other images dynamically around this one. Okay, so pop along, we're going to grab another image, swoop it into the same container, and uh, just want to grab one here that is more of a, a close-up face. So there we go. And we're going to do the same thing. So let's, let's make a circle. So fix that to pixels. I'll do 120 on this one and 120 here also. Border radius, box shadow. I'll just leave that as it is pretty much. And border type, wonderful, that's great. So uh, we have the little diddly image and we want to uh, put place it dynamically on the bigger diddly image. Uh, what a lot of people would do here is start playing with the margin. So you could uh, take this and uh, decrease the margin by 220 perhaps. Um, oh, I've done that backwards. There we go. And then we would drag it to the left. And that's something we could do. However, it becomes a little bit fiddly to uh, use that, uh, to target that image. The the actual line for it is down here. And so you'd have to use the navigator. Uh, but that, that's not a bad option. Uh, but we don't want to do that. So uh, I will zero that out. What we're going to do instead is uh, we've got the Im image selected, go to advanced and position and absolute. Now you'll see this please note here. And what it's saying is that custom positioning is not considered best practice. And this is mainly in regard to how it could render on different devices, so responsive devices. So be really mindful of how it's displaying on stuff like the tablet and the mobile. But truthfully, when you're looking at a lot of these uh, design library designs and they're all a bit more sort of dynamic like this, most of them have one or many elements positioned absolutely. And that's how they're achieving this. So there is something to be said about the, the design libraries on Elementor and Breakdance, for example. Breakdance makes a lot of use of positioning things absolutely in order to achieve the design library effects. And so the bar is set a lot by using this value here. Uh, but just be careful with it. Be aware of how you're using it. Anyway, so uh, you can actually drag and drop this. So it's really easy to, to place an image where you'd like it to be, much easier than using the margins. But just note down here that as I move it, you can see that these values here change. And so you can actually move it like so. Okay, cool. I'm gonna place this there and then I will uh, place on a hover effect. Hover and here we're going to go for a, a grow rotate. I like that one. Okay, let's just actually duplicate that. I'm gonna yank him down there and make him a bit bigger. Okay, cool, and change the image out. So here we are, we have a few different images here and obviously we can place uh, some headings in this one and make a full section. So like so. So this is very similar to the uh, example that we had in the beginning. And look at that, you can just play with all of these images, 
images, duplicate another. Don't forget, you can also make these clickable. So just add a link to these. And so then there's a real purpose to it. Now that's the desktop view. Obviously we want to make sure that this is working on mobile and, and things. So uh, if we pop along to the tablet here, we can see that we have a problem with the absolute positioning here. And we also have a problem with the the, the shape. So we need to bring that down until it's something more like what we're looking for. And uh, popping along to this image here, uh, I, I, could, I could drag that one in, but I can pop along to the values here if you have lost something and bring it back. So uh, I would say that I want to uh, most likely give this more breathing space. Certainly want to bring that one down. Um, I, I would reduce the size of these um, and then uh, obviously on mobile again, you just want to make those little adjustments. However, I would say there's an argument for actually removing these from the mobile view uh, just so that you know you don't you don't really need them on a refined mobile uh, layout. But yes, have a play with your designs. This is how to make uh, more of a dynamic design that you see in something like a design library. Uh, if you want to add a little bit more of a pop to other elements, so these are image hover effects. If you want to apply that a bit to something like a text uh, heading, um, I would say your options here to keep it nice and simple are pop along to motion effects, and you might have a bit of fun with mouse effects there, just to add a little bit of um, fun to other elements on the page. So have have a little look at those in a play. Uh, you can get a lot of dynamic fun out of these elements with just a few clicks in Elementor. So let's take a look at that on the front page. Refresh, and there you go. We have our original example and uh, this funky little thing with lots of image hover effects and a result that is chasing us around the screen. Um, I wouldn't recommend you do that, it looks gross, but uh, have fun with it nonetheless. Okay, so that's how to use image hover effects in Elementor. These are straight out of the box. And uh, again, if you check out the next video, we'll go over how to make image uh, background image hover effects, uh, much like these. And, and again, no plugins, no coding, uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much. Do like, subscribe, all the rest of it, and get in touch if you have any tutorial ideas. Catch you later.